Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Pound and we are studying chapter 5.1 on the cardiovascular, digestive, and immune systems. We're going to start our study of the body systems by studying section 5.1.2 on the cardiovascular system. So our objectives are going to be to explain the function of the cardiovascular system, identify the parts of a heart, and trace the path of blood through the heart, and summarize several factors that can lead to heart disease. So the two functions of the cardiovascular system are to deliver oxygen and nutrients to different parts of the body, just like this truck delivers things, perhaps even food to a grocery store, and to pick up waste products from the cells, much like a garbage truck picks up waste and takes it away from your home. Parts of the heart are the atrium, which is an upper chamber of the heart. So your heart contains two atria, the right and the left atrium. And these atria, which is plural, are collection chambers in the heart. Also notice that right and left are switched because this is as if we are looking at somebody laying down in front of us and so their left and right would be opposite from us. And that is going to be the way it's going to be with all of these diagrams. You're going to have to remember to switch left and right. A ventricle is a lower chamber of the heart. There are two ventricles and they are down here. I remember that ventricles are on the bottom because they're shaped like V's kind of here. You can kind of see that with this valve that it's shaped like a V. Also, you could think maybe A is on the top because it comes first in the alphabet and V is on the bottom because it comes towards the end of the alphabet. Now, let's trace the route that blood travels through the heart. Deoxygenated blood, that means blood that has had the oxygen removed from it by the cells in the body, flows into the heart from the vena cavas into the right atrium. So in the diagram, we have the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. They go into the right atrium. There are two vena cavas or two parts to it because the superior vena cava comes down from the brain and the upper body and the inferior vena cava comes from the lower body. It passes through a valve into the right ventricle which pumps the blood to the pulmonary artery. So it, we're in the right atrium. The reason the diagram is blue because this is oxygen poor blood, it's deoxygenated. It goes through this valve into the right atrium, or the right ventricle, excuse me. Ventricles are the pumping part of the heart. So it will pump that blood through the pulmonary valve up here to the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery carries the blood to the lungs where it releases carbon dioxide and picks up oxygen. So here, the pulmonary arteries are going to the lungs. In fact, at the ends of these area arrows, maybe you could write to the lungs to help you remember that. Pulmonary means lungs. And it's going to go to the lungs to release carbon dioxide and pick up oxygen. Oxygenated blood returns from the lungs to the heart via the pulmonary veins. So here, these arrows are coming from the lungs, so maybe you want to write that, from the lungs, and they're on each side of the heart. They're going into the left atrium here and collecting in the left atrium. It flows into the left atrium and passes through a valve into the left ventricle. So here, the blood is going down into the left ventricle through a valve and it's going to be pumped again because this is the pumping part of the heart. The left ventricle pumps the oxygenated blood to the aorta where it goes to the rest of the body through the arteries. So here, we're going into the aorta. The aorta goes out to all the parts of the body carrying oxygen-rich blood. The blood flows from arteries into capillaries into veins and returns to the heart through the vena cavas. So here, out of the aorta, it's going to go to arteries, to capillaries, and capillaries go by the cells, and that's where the gas exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen takes place. And then it will come back through the vena cavas, 
and uh, back to the heart and the process starts all over again. Now, I bet you've had your blood pressure taken or know, have seen somebody have their blood pressure taken. So with blood pressure, there are two numbers, and you can see here, ignore this number here, that's actually your pulse. There's the systolic, which they have as SIS here, which is the top number. This is the higher pressure on blood vessels directly after a heartbeat. So your heart beats, and this is the pressure on your blood vessels when your heart is beating, and that is the systolic. The diastolic pressure is the bottom number, D for down. The lower pressure, it's the lower pressure between heartbeats. So it's always lower because this is when the heart is not beating. So there's not as much pressure on the blood vessels. Now, a person can have hypertension if they have high blood pressure. This individual does not look like they have high blood pressure. 120 over 80 is pretty average. That's a good blood pressure to have. If you have a lot higher than that, you have something called hypertension. Hyper meaning high and tension, okay? So there's a high tension on your blood vessels. And that's not good because too much pressure on your blood vessels causes them to harden. Uh, when you get atherosclerosis, and it also could cause the blood vessels to burst and bleed, and that would not be good either. Then you'll have internal bleeding. It may cause an, an embolism to break. An embolism is where you have a weak part in a blood vessel and it breaks open. So let's talk about the major components of blood. The first major component is plasma. Plasma is the liquid part of the blood. There are also platelets. Platelets are what cause your blood to clot. And finally, there are red and white blood cells. And mostly what you see here in the background are the red blood cells. And those are the more solid part, other than the platelets, that the red blood cells carry oxygen throughout the body and the white blood cells are part of the immune system. There are four major blood types. Perhaps you know your blood type. The four major blood types are O, A, B, and AB. And finally, factors that lead to heart disease, which is one of the most common killers right now. First of all, high blood pressure, uncontrolled high blood pressure will lead to heart disease. Also, lack of exercise. Exercise is good for you. It keeps your heart healthy. Smoking. Smoking leads to heart disease as well. So it's not a good habit to start. So do not start that. And obesity. So eating too much fast food, taking in too many calories, not burning off enough through exercise can also lead to heart disease. So our objectives today were to explain the function of the cardiovascular system, identify the parts of a heart and trace the path of blood through the heart, and summarize several factors that can lead to heart disease. Don't forget your five questions in your notes and keep watching to answer